And when I put this, I have to tell you how they are connected. I have to tell you the path if you're going to solve a problem. For instance, you want to know how much energy you're going to get out from doing this expansion. Right? How much energy are you going to get out and how far are you going to be able to drive the car with this expansion, let's say. Let's say that's the problem. Right? So I need to tell you how you're doing the expansion because that's going to tell you how much energy you're wasting during that expansion. It goes back to the second law. Right? Nothing is efficient. You're always wasting energy into heat somewhere when you do a change that involves a mechanical change. All right, so I need to tell you the path when I go from one state to the other. And the path is going to be the sequence of intermediate states going from the initial state to the final state. So for instance, if I draw a graph of pressure on one axis and temperature on the other axis, my initial state is at a temperature of 100 degrees uh, Celsius and 5 bar. My final state is 50 degrees Celsius and 1 bar. So I could have a, a two steps in my path. I could decide, first of all, to keep the pressure constant and lower the pressure. When I get to 50 degrees Celsius, I could choose to keep the temperature constant and lower the pressure. I, I'm sorry. My first step would be to keep the pressure constant and lower the temperature. Then I lower the pressure, keeping the temperature constant. So there's my intermediate state here. This is one of many paths. There's an infinite number of paths you could take. Right? You could take a continuous path where you have an infinite number of equilibrium points in between the two, a smooth path where you drop the pressure and the temperature simultaneously in little increments. Right. So when you do a problem, the path is going to turn out to be extremely important. How do you get from the initial state to the final state? Define the initial state, define the final state, define the path, get all these really clear, and you basically solve the problem. You've got to spend the time to make sure that everything is well-defined before you start trying to work out these problems. Okay, more about the path. There are, there are a couple ways you could go through that path. If I look at this smooth path here, I could have that path be very slow and steady so that at every point of the, along the way, my gas is in equilibrium. So I've got this, this piston here, it's compressed, and I slowly, slowly increase the volume, drop the temperature. Then I can go back. The gas is in equilibrium at every point of the way. It's called a, that's a reversible path. So I can reverse the process. I expand it and I reverse it. No problem. So I could have a reversible path. Or I take my my gas, and instead of slowly, slowly raising it, dropping the pressure, I go, I go from five bar to one bar extremely fast. Right? What happens to my gas inside? Well, my gas inside is going to be very unhappy. It's not going to stay in equilibrium. Parts of the system are going to be at five bar. Parts of it are one bar. Parts of it may be even at zero bar if I go really fast. I'm going to create a vacuum. So the system will not be described by a single state variable during the, during the path, right? If I look at different points in my container during that path, irreversible path also defines the direction of time, right? You can only have an irreversible path go one way in time, not the other way. The chalk breaks irreversibly, and you can't put it back together so easily. Right? You've got to pretty much take that chalk and make a slurry out of it, put water, and dry it back up, put it in a mold, and then you can have a chalk again, right? But you can't just glue it back together. That would not be the same state as what you started out with. 